Hello, welcome to the, another edition of the Low Code Cafe. This is episode number 99. And today our primary topic is integrate anything, picking up the slack. We'll talk about uh, this interesting topic of how to uh, communicate in no code and low code with a Slack channel. Um, but before we do that, we'll talk about some other things uh, as well. So my name is Dale Warner. I'm the head of support for Plant an App. Um, this is an event that we do every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time, and it's intended to be a technical event, something that low coders can uh, gain direct knowledge uh, about what's going on with low code in general, plant an app in specific. All of the past episodes are recorded and they're on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash plant an app. You can get there directly with that QR code. But uh, we encourage you to uh, sign up and subscribe, uh, get the alarm so that um, as we post new content out on our channel, that you're aware of it immediately. Today's agenda is pretty straightforward. It's going to be mostly from me. So uh, I have Patrick Anderson uh, available to, uh, to provide a little bit of an alternate voice. But we'll talk about our product roadmap updates a little bit of uh, what's going on in the support channel, and then we'll get right into Slack. So product roadmap updates. Uh, we are our current version 1.21, which is all about simplifying um, the multiple environment scenario and uh, deploying in a multi-environment multi scenario. This is a first step that we took uh, to be able to import and export the entities. That was released yesterday, July 5. And so um, if you're on version 1.20, you should see it uh, on, on the release channel uh, on the updates tab. We also are updating the um, updates tab. So when you upgrade to this version, you'll also see the ability to switch to the new interface for our updates. And, uh, but the, the old one is still there. Um, we wanna make sure that we give it the right number of miles before we remove the old interface. Um, that said, we'll go to our support channel discussion. Uh, and this is mostly about hot fixes today. We have previously fixed 44, uh, released 44 hot fixes in version 1.20. And today we're releasing three more. And this will probably be the end of hotfixes to our prior release. Now that we're on uh, 120 is released, then hotfixes will come out to 120, uh, excuse me, 1.21, and uh, the 120 will, will be uh, stable as it is. So there are three things that got fixed. We have fixed, um, we have our, our Trumbo wig field that uh, we use internally as well as uh, making it a field available for you within action form, within the forms product. And the control K insert link functionality wasn't working in some circumstances. So you, so you would go to insert a link and uh, it wouldn't let you interact with the box. So we fixed that. Um, one, one of the issues that we had with date picker is uh, uh, that when you used that with an Ajax ac action, the date would either get cleared or changed by a day due to some date time math. Um, so we, uh, that has been resolved. And then as a result of an internal project where um, we, we have the uh, dynamic container uh, feature where you're generating a form on the fly from uh, data or, or otherwise, um, the drop-down fields uh, didn't have the other functionality. You couldn't add a drop-down field. You could add a drop-down field that would allow you to choose from a number of items, but if it wasn't in the list, you couldn't add it. And so now we have added this other functionality, the same other functionality that's in the static drop-down fields is now available in the dynamic one. So for those of you that uh, generate automatic forms, that could be a benefit to you. So those are released. Um, within uh, week, week, uh, week by week, we get together in on Fridays, the same hour, and uh, we have an event called Low Code Campfire. So <clears throat> that is um, an opportunity for you to have to join us and have more of a discussion than this webinar format. Um, and so we encourage you to join for that. 
Uh, watch for our emails uh, on, on how to join if you're not already part of it. And um, this is a great time to post some links for this episode. So let me get that done. Um, and we'll get those done right now. So this is in the chat. So this will tell you, uh, this is uh, how to register for the low code campfire that I was just talking about, but also um, you can get access to our recordings, the community portal and um, our feedback form, which you can, we, we love feedback on uh, whether it's telling us that we did a great job or that we skipped something or suggestions for future episodes here in the low code cafe. I've also uh, added the links for uh, the Slack documentation and a, uh, a tool that I use, the uh, Swagger uh, Builder, which lets, uh, which you'll see me use in this uh, upcoming episode. So all those are available to you. And with that, we're going to go right on into our hands-on low coding. And um, this is continuing in our Integrate Anything episode we're going to uh, do some work with uh, Slack today. Uh, and so uh, we're going to go both into no code and low code. So the scenario that we that I've picked out for no code is to post a message in a Slack channel when there are contributions to our campfire website. So if somebody does a new contribution and we let everybody know who, who is uh, who has installed our app, that a, uh, a Slack um, or Slack app that there is a new contribution, or perhaps we'll do an edit to a contribution. But it's just a way of, of uh, directly communicating out a message. And so, if you use Slack and you want to, to tie your app into Slack, this will be a way to do that. And then we'll uh, so that's available to you in no code. And then in the low code category, there is uh, we, we're going to build a Slack slash command. And the API documents uh, in, in Slack will help us get through that pretty easily. But it'll be, for example, you'll have the ability uh, to type slash campfire details, and that's a, 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 a normal Slack construct, and then get more details on a particular ID. Both of these are kind of uh, simple implementations that uh, that we're going to do uh, again that second one is a low code could because we're going to have to actually do a call to uh, and do a server request versus uh just using a built-in action uh, but these are this is a good starting spot it will let you uh, have your application send out information to a slack channel or to allow you or your users to interact with you with your uh, um, application directly from slack so plant an app and Slack talking back and forth. So first we'll deal with pre prerequisites. You have to install our Slack integration add-on. So I'm gonna slip over into a site that doesn't have that installed on it. Um, this, is done, this is our updates tab. And if you look down on the overview of what you have installed, we don't have the Slack add-on installed. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, or we would need to. And so you would go to the add-ons tab and find the Slack integration and click the install button. Now, this is a site that doesn't actually need that. So I'm not going to install it. I've already installed it. I just wanted to show you where to go about doing that. So this is the site that we're gonna be working on today. And if we were to look in the overview to this site, this is the campfire at uplinkedin.com. We're actually gonna be modifying our, uh, uh, the, our shared website that we use on the campfire, uh, low code campfire. Um, this has already been upgraded to version 1.21. And if we look at the overview, we see that we have the Slack integration already installed. So pretty straightforward there. So that's the prerequisite. And then again, I'm repeating my links that uh, you already have on the chat. So uh, let's move on. So the first thing that we're going to do is notify Slack, uh, notify Slack when there is a um, campfire contribution. And so there's work that we need to do in both Slack and in Plantin app. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is add a channel in 
uh, Slack where these are going to come out. And then we will um, add an app to our Slack channel, uh, enable some webhooks, and enable the webhooks functionality, and we'll test that. So we'll go that far first, and then we'll talk about the plant and app stuff. So uh, I'm going to bring up Slack. And the first thing I'm going to do is to add a channel. This is where everything uh, is going to come out. And so we'll create a new channel. It's going to be called Fire. And this, uh, this optional description is And um, this is this is going to be a private channel. We're not going to publish it it's solely for uh, for illustration purposes, but uh, we'll create the channel. So that gives us a channel. I'm not going to add anybody to it either. Uh, this is this is going to be just for me. But uh, we now have a campfire channel, and we'll be able to interact with it. All right. Um, the next thing is we're going to go. We have our I've signed into my Slack account and I have my apps listed here and I have some, some apps that already exist. I did this yesterday on the, on the uh, clone of Campfire to make sure I was gonna be able to do it today, but we're gonna add a new app. Let's see if I can figure out how to do that. So we will create a new app and the app's name is going to, well, we're gonna do it from scratch and the app's name is gonna be the App. Um, the workspace is going to be our plant and app workspace, and we'll create that. There's a great uh, Slack has some great tutorials about how to go about this, and so uh, um, in addition to watching this video or using this information, I would definitely get into their tutorials. Um, having built the application, the first thing we're going to do is activate the incoming web, web hooks, which let us post messages from an external source into Slack. So I'm going to click there. Uh, let's see, it's waiting. There we go. And so we will say activate. And uh, after you activate it, you need a webhook URL. So you add a new, this is, this is the place that you're going to post. And so when you post to Slack, this information is gonna show up on your channel. So we'll add a new webhook. And the channel that we're going to post in is going to be campfire and allow. So now we have a webhook that we can talk to. And uh, I am going to copy this and then we'll just test out uh, using that Swagger service just to see what was done, right? What was done for us just by activating this in Slack. So I have my link here to Swagger Inspector. And uh, this, you might use Postman. You don't even have to do this at all, but I love to test as I go along to make sure things are working. So we want to do a post command and I'm going to post the webhook um, on to, uh, in, into the URL. This is what's, what's going to transmit. And then uh, within the documentation for Slack, there's in this APIs, the section using webhooks, it tells how to use your incoming webhook to post a message. So you post to whatever the URLs that the URL that they gave you, it's uh, that um, it's an application JSON post, and we're going to use their sample "Hello World" post. And so, um, in our request body, we'll just say "Hello World." Now, I'm going to try and get all of this on the screen. So we're in the campfire here, uh, campfire channel in Slack. We have our text here ready to go. And so we'll hit send and see if it goes through. So Swagger and doing this post lets us get this information. 
we can change the message slightly to show that it's so whatever message we send to that URL is going to our channel. So we've established a, a nice, easy API that um, allows us to communicate with that. So going back to our, um, our plan here, uh, we've added our channel, created the app, enabled webhooks, and we've tested it out. We've done our hello world. So now we're going to move on to what do we do in plant an app to, um, to make this work. And so I am going to jump into our campfire application and we'll go to connectors. The first thing we to do this in a no code way is to create a connector. And so this connector is going to be our, um, we just give it a name. This is so that we recognize it later on down the line. So this is our Slack um, place to fire connector. And the connector type is Slack. It's going to pop, uh, ask us some questions. And the first one is the webhook URL. And I'm going to Windows. Yes, sir. That, I was just going to clarify that that uh, connector type is there because you have the Slack integration add-on installed, correct? Yes. If we hadn't if we hadn't done that add-on install, then the Slack connector wouldn't be there. That's your clue to go look in the updates. Okay. So we're going to use the same webhook that they gave us. And we're going to use the same channel that we establish. We don't need a username and icon or emoji, so we'll just save that. So this is letting Plant an App know that we have a connection to Slack, and um, the the connector information is kept private. Now I'm showing it to you on this video. It'll be temporary, and we'll remove it uh, after after the end of this video, so that it doesn't get abuse. But uh, by putting it here inside of this um, connector, it, it allows you to set up something to consume it without um, without revealing the credentials to uh, to anybody. So we've added a connector to the campfire channel, and uh, the way that I want to consume this, I, I love to create things in workflows. This will be a simple well, uh, workflow that's going to be called send a message to Slack Campfire. And so anytime we call this workflow, we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to use this workflow anywhere where we want to just send a message to Slack. So this will be a new workflow. I'm going to create a namespace called Slack. So that I can put all my Slack things in one spot. So that'll be the namespace and we'll select it. We're going to uh, name the workflow right away because I have it on my clipboard. Send a message to Slack Campfire. Um, this is going to have only one input. It's going to be the text that we want to send. So anytime we want to talk to Slack, we can just send some text, it's going to be a required input. And then for our process, we're going to use a Slack connector, the Slack action rather. There's an action that got installed when we installed that add-on called send Slack message. And it's very easy. The credentials for where we're going to send Slack since we only have one connector, it's just defaulted automatically to the right spot, but we're sending it to a connector and the connector it's going to use is the only one there. So it's all defaulted, but that, that's the connector we just set up. And the message we want to send is text, the thing that came in from the input. Um, and we're just going to accept the defaults. So you can't get any easier from a load code perspective to make this work. We'll add an endpoint and and now we can save our, our workflow. Um, let's see if I can get both of these on the screen. So if I run a save and test uh, my workflow and just type um, text is and click run, 
we get uh, this posted into the campfire channel of Slack. So uh, workflow, uh, very simple to uh, create and to send to our Slack channel. So now, um, taking a look at where we're trying to go, we have, um, we've created this workflow and now we're gonna wire this to the add edit functionality. So when somebody, we said when somebody creates, or in this case, I'm gonna do edit, but when somebody um, works with a, um, a contribution, we wanna know about it. So we'll go to our contributions and there's a new form here that says, oh, I have a new contribution and what is it? Or we have another one that is editing. When somebody edits a contribution, um, they can update it. And so we're gonna wire it to this update button just to let them know that something's happened. So the, the uh, columns that we have in here are, uh, name and ID. And so we'll, we'll use name and ID in, in our message to Slack. So um, we are going to use the, uh, our gear icon to edit the contribution form and wire this in. So here's our add button, our update button. I'm just gonna focus on the update button for now. When, when an update takes place, here are all the things that are that are happening. We have the update contribution action and uh, some other uh, functionality. We're going to uh, add a call to our workflow. So um, I find it easiest to just find it this way. There's the execute send messages to Slack Campfire. That's the workflow we just created. And I'm gonna put this right after the contribution actually got updated. The only thing it asks for is the text so we can say, um, and we can look at the, we can get our fields from here. Um, the contribution ID that got edited is that one and the name of it is that one. And I'm just gonna copy both of those things and use our Windows clipboard to say the um, the number of that and the title is that and I'm going to give some instructions we're going to uh, kind of pre-build here for our slash command so we'll say um, sorry, checking my notes. Because we're going to call this campfire details. So will you say use slash and then the number Now this is this is just to illustrate. I don't know that I would design it this way, but I, uh, for a final product. But I just wanted to illustrate that we're going to build a slash command, and and so we'll tell them exactly how to use the slash command. Um, so the only thing we've done is added one action, the call to our workflow, and we're passing some text. So we'll save that and refresh the screen. And again, let's see if we can get both things on here. So if we wanted to look at the, uh, if we were editing, say this, uh, unlock the stuck scheduler job item. And so we have it here and I'm just gonna click update. As soon as we do, we get a message, a, a contribution was edited, ID number 29 named unlock scheduler job, u slash campfire details 29 for more information. So, um, with this, we've accomplished our first goal. The um, anytime that the campfire contribution is uh, edited, in this case, we're notifying Slack. And all that was done doing low code. Just you know, on a summary, we've we created the channel and the app. We activated webhooks and tested, and then we 
um, modified Planton app. We added a connector, did a workflow, and then um, wired that to the add edit. By doing it as a workflow, for example, it'd be very easy to do the same logic uh, to the add button. Uh, so we could, when somebody added a new one, we could um, put a slightly different message. Uh, very, very easy to do. Let's, um, let's take a look at that. So we have our contributions form and we'll, uh, we'll go back to our update button and use the same, uh, we will export this, and grab that um, definition and use it again in the add functionality. So the actions that happen on add, we can uh, import that same content and this is going to happen after we create the new contribution and we just have to change the message a little bit so instead we're going to say added and the id that gets added is the id that comes out of the add new so this is going to be the new contribution id so instead of the one that was being edited we're going to say contribution ID, its name is still P name, so we're good there. And the same token is what they're going to need when they use the slash command. So um, we uh, just illustrating then that doing that by workflow lets us use, uh, just concern ourselves with what text we want to send and not how it does the work. And that workflow, again, very, very simple. So we can call it from multiple places. And uh, so we'll do that. Um, I don't actually have a new one to add. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not actually going to test that one, but uh, very easy to do. So now we're, we can move on to the, to the next part of our program here, which is this slash. Uh, we're going to let users interact with our app. Using, uh, we'll define that uh, campfire details. Um, and so uh, in order to do that, let's see, am I in the right spot here? Oh, a little back up. Um, in order to do that, we're going to um, do some work in plant an app to kind of get ready because we know that in this case, Slack is going to be communicating with plant an app. So we're going to do uh, to create an endpoint that Slack can talk to, and then um, we'll create the command. So here we go. The first one, uh, I'm going to create an endpoint called Slack campfire details. And in looking through the, the documentation, I see that what they're going to send to us is things like the command, the text, the response URL. And so we're going to uh, build an API that receives that. And then uh, just for illustration purposes, we'll send these to the log and get it all to work and then we'll do something with it. So uh, there's Slack is actually gonna send us more than that. And we'll look at in a minute and see all the things they're, they're gonna send us, but these are the ones that we care about. So again, getting into our app, we'll go to APIs and create that. This is going to be a new API endpoint. Slack is gonna post it to us. So we'll, again, we'll see that in the documentation in a moment. Um, so it's enabled. We don't need to debug it. We don't want it to cache. We want it to happen immediately. And so we're going to have these three parameters. The first is going to be command. This is the command they're passing us. Um, the next is going to be the text of what they're passing us. And the last one is going to be something called response URL. This is, um, we want to talk back to the application that is 
um, executing the slash command to that directly to that user. This is where we talk back. And so we're gonna need that uh, when we wanna reply to them. So again, just to make sure that all these things work, we're gonna send these things to the log. So I'm going to um, uh, see log an event and the event type is going to be an administrative alert. And the things that I want to send, I'm going to send all these three things. So it's the text. And so anything, whatever's coming in, if I've got these parameters right from Slack, Whatever's coming in is going to get sent to our log. So we'll be able to take a look at what they're sending us uh, every time they send us something. And I'm not going to concern myself with uh, how we're going to respond to them or deal with any errors. This is just a simple uh, setup. And then this is, I'm setting it up as a public API. So anybody can call it. You probably would want to tighten yours down a little bit. So I'm going to click save and test. And I'm not actually going to test it. What I'm going to do is use this um, URL that was um, that's present here. And this is what we're going to need to tell Slack what to do. So uh, we've done our first objective here. We built something that's going to catch what's coming from Slack. And so now we're going to create the slash command for Slack. So let's see if I can find that in there. Set up. Um, yeah, this was documentation. So here we are in Slack. And we're, we're working on our low code campfire application and we're going to go to slash commands. We wanna create a new command and the command is going to be slash campfire. Details. So that's what they will type. And this is the, where they're going to post about it. And this is, that's our API that's going to catch that. And our description is going to be and um, so that'll be the hint that's there. And so this is telling Slack what needs to be added. So we'll save that. Um, Slack comes back and says, we've changed the permission scope. So we need to reinstall the app. So we'll click reinstall and say, uh, repeat, we're gonna be able to perform actions and we're still going to campfire and allow. So now this is activated and we should be able to see it at work. So if we go to Slack and with no more work than that, if we start typing slash campfire. Um, so this is my test one. We can ignore the one to clone. This is the one we just set up, campfire detail and the uh, contribution ID. So it's telling us all the stuff that we just did uh, when we uh, created the slash command. So we can say campfire detail, and then I'm going to say one. So I'm just going to pick one as a test. So we're going to do that. And we get back a success message, but nothing else, because we haven't told it how to respond yet. If we go to our application and look at the logs, we should see that it did what we asked it to do. So uh, the command that came in was slash campfire detail. The text value was one. And we have this uh, response URL where we could talk to Slack. So this gives us enough information to do the work. We, uh, in our case, we've built a, a, an API that's just directly intended to deal with this one particular use, the campfire detail. But you could build one that was, uh, that that took a look at the command and did different things. So we're not actually going to use the command. This uh, we, we know that if they've arrived here, they're asking about a campfire detail. So we're going to use the text and the response uh, URL to send back information 
about that particular contribution. Cool. So just to, um, what you're saying there is that uh, if you had different uh, multiple commands in uh, Slack, you could have just the one API, is that? Absolutely, if that's yeah, okay. you, you could design it that way. In, in today's episode, I'm just gonna design it that this one API is gonna handle Got it. one command from Slack. But yes, absolutely, you could uh, handle many different types of command through one API. It's just your choice of design. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and I think, I, I let's see, before I go on to that, uh, I am gonna, I had promised to show the documentation. So the Slack, if we use the learn more about slash commands, <coughs> we can see the slash command documentation and what all you're gonna get. So it tells all about how to do that and how to create them, which is what we've already walked through. But then it says, this is the payload of what you're gonna get when somebody does a slash command. So it's gonna give the command, the text and the response URL. That's how I picked out those names. But you can see it's also passing the trigger ID, there's a token, there's what team they came from, there's an app ID. So lots and lots of information that's being passed uh, that I'm choosing to ignore. I'm just grabbing the command, the text and the response. That's enough to get where, where we're going today. But I just wanted to, to let you know where that documentation was. All right, so in our map, keep from getting lost here, um, we have created something to catch it. We created the slash command, and now we're going to move on to how are we going to uh, uh, interact. So bef um, the, the, the picture is this API has been activated. Uh, they've done the, the slash command and they're going to want, we're going to want to send them information back. Um, I, I need a little bit of, uh, I mean, I don't have to do it this way, but again, I like to use workflows. So we're going to create a workflow that lets us send our information back to Slack, wherever it came from. And uh, so we'll be able to communicate with that, with that webhook that we got. The response URL. So we'll we'll build a workflow so we can easily talk back, and then we'll we'll finish up by uh, taking a, uh, actually building the output that we need. So uh, again, I'm doing a little bit of uh, of uh, work that makes it easier to work with the application and in the form of a workflow. So I'm going to create a new workflow. Keep it in the Slack namespace. And the name of it is going to be send text to Slack webhook. It's going to get three inputs. The first is webhook. The next is text to send, text field, and a response type. And this is information you can read in the documentation, but we you can either respond, uh, send the response back to um, just the user that inquired about it, or you can send it back to the channel as a whole. And in, uh, and so this lets you choose. I'm going to default it to in channel, but we can override that as we put in uh, as we send the information. So. Um, yeah. You didn't correct me. I would have looked for that for an hour. Webhook. So these are going to be required. We'll let this one default to uh, in channel. So that's the input. The process that we're going to do is really just, a, again, another one step thing because all we're going to do is a server request. And the server request is going to. Um, back to the Slack user. Um, the URL that we're going to go to is this webhook that's being passed to us. Um, 
it is a post. Mm, let's see here. I want to make sure I get it right. These server requests can be tricky. Um, and I've managed to time out on my other screen here. So give me just a second. And thank you, Albert, for watching my, my punctuation. Uh, you, you would have saved me. All right, so the server request is, um, you know, the, so the URL is, is webhook. Um, the structure of this that we're gonna respond back, it's a post. And uh, so we're going to post a text uh, to the text field, we're going to pass this text to send. The response type is going to be the response type we passed in. So these are the, the things that this um, webhook is expecting. And there's, again, documentation on that. Um, we do want to make sure that it knows that we're doing uh, the application JSON type. So we say content type that we're sending is application JSON. And um, we could, we will get a response back. And in this case, we're, we're not dealing with any error checking. So I'm not gonna um, handle any response back. We'll just um, make the call and that's it. And we end our, out, uh, we end our process and we're not gonna have any output. So if we've done it right, this is gonna accept the webhook, the text to send, the response type. It's going to send it via a server request. Same, uh, just formatting it where Slack is expecting it and uh, send it. <clears throat> so we'll we'll save this and um, we should be good there. So again, keeping track of where we're getting, we've built this uh, kind of intermediate workflow to make it easy to talk to Slack. So now let's go change our, um, our API. And um, so we're going to do two things. We're going to echo the input, and then we're going to go out and query our, um, uh, our data and provide the answer that they were looking for to uh, this campfire details command. So first, let's echo the input. That's easy enough to do. So we go to our API. Slack, and we find our camp, Slack Campfire Details API. We're going to edit that. So we have the command, the text, the response. We're logging an event. But now we're going to add a, um, we're just going to echo back. So we're going to use that same um, workflow that we just created. Uh, this is the original one that we set up. This one is sending text to the Slack web, webhook. Um, that asks those three things. So um, this is going to be coming back to the user. So we need the response URL and that goes here. The text that we're sending is um, Text. And the choices were um, for these um, is, is either in channel or ephemeral. I spelled it right, ephemeral. That means that it's going to go just to the user that, that we're talking to in the first place. So uh, that's it. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a response, uh, a raw response to the output here that's just going to be 100 OK. And this, this is going to let Slack know the, that uh, it got a good response and it's going to keep it from producing that success message. We don't, we don't need that success message. We're, we're now sending a nice response that they're going to be able to read. So I'm going to save this again. It's using this. Um, uh, we're, we're, I use save and test just so that we can get back to it easily. 
but uh, let's test it out. So we are here in uh, back in Slack and we can use our slash campfire um, detail and the number 29 and hit enter and we get back a message now. It's only visible to me because we use that ephemeral. It says, you have requested details for ID number 29. So we just did an echo back and that just lets us know that it, we're getting the right detail. Cool. So now the only thing that's left to do is to actually do the work, go out and get the detail from, um, from our app and uh, provide good information back to the user. So we'll edit and um, we'll, uh, we will go get the information and then send it back with the same type of command, the same uh, web flow, uh, workflow output. So what we need to do is to add, uh, need a contribution. We're gonna read for the particular contribution now. Uh, I will point out I'm being very lazy and not error checking, right? The text that they sent could have been something could be, could be an invalid ID, uh, could be something completely different or nothing at all. I'm just assuming they're providing a good ID and, and um, if they don't, it's gonna blow up or, or not provide the response that we want. Um, but um, they're providing the ID in the text. So the thing that we want to read is the text. I'm going to stop, I'll put the ID in there. The output token that we're going to get is we're going to just going to call this contribution. This is going to give us all of our fields back from the contribution record. And so we'll be able to use that to compose a message. Good. So uh, the next thing is we're going to do the same. Um, we're gonna use the same workflow. So I'm just gonna clone it and position it in our output here. And because it's gonna go back to the URL that they've asked for, we're gonna change this to get, um, uh, to, to be a good message and then it's gonna still be ephemeral. So um, Still the contribution text, uh, the one that they requested, the name of it is and, and again, I just want to show you the the field names are here the same thing as these field columns. We could look in the entity, but we have the, and actually let's do that. We'll go to our entity and take a look at the field names. So entities contribution, if we look at that, the properties are the name, description, page, and comment. We're gonna, out, we're gonna output the, the name and the page just for, uh, for illustration purposes. So. We're working here. We have the contribution name. And then we'll output the page, which happens to be a URL, so it'll be very straightforward. So um, that's all we need. So we will now go back and uh, test this out in Slack. So same command. Our detail and 29. And this time the response is you've requested details for 29. Came for our details contribution 29. The name is unlock stuck scheduler job and it's got a link here that we can go view it. And if we click the button, it'll take us there. Because that's the, the, the job, the URL. Okay, so um, I 
I love live. Let's just try it. Just <laughs> If our detail and we give it a bad or no information, and uh, you, so we get a bad response back, right? It didn't. It didn't actually do anything. So uh, you know, we'll um, again. That's I just kind of thinking in terms of next steps. That would be something you'd want to clean up. Make sure it's a valid one. Provide a a um, an error message. That's not a valid ID. Something like that. Um, so uh, I'm kind of summarizing, putting it all together, um, what we've done is to say that when people go to our contributions page and they either edit or add a contribution, we'll pick a different one on a slide a form open. Uh, they could have done an edit here and say update. And as soon as they do, they get a contribution was edited, name slide form open and use this for more information. So if we're being lazy, we can do that. And it, uh, nope, I guess you can't do that. What do I know about Slack, right? Campfire detail, oh, and and it has an S in there. That's probably the reason Campfire Detail 23. And uh, so we get it. So this is just to kind of illustrate you can tap Slack on the shoulder through no code and get it to show you information. Um, you can use a slash command to communicate back to it. I, uh, and, and that's where we're trying to go today. Um, We've done that. I wanted to point out that there's a ton more capabilities and I encourage you to explore other API capabilities. There is the support for being able to provide a much prettier display, um, more sections, more formatting, um, a, a better look in what you display to Slack. We just did the simplest form of sending a text, um, but there's all kinds of capabilities built in there and, and those, um, links that I posted earlier will get you there. And then there's also uh, support for being able to trigger a form to pop up in Slack and, and corral people into uh, entering, filling in the form and pushing a button. And then you get back the form information and the button information posted back to your API, which you can then use to trigger other things or provide more better information. Of course, you can once you, once your API is uh, is active, you can use that information within the application. So, just trying to, if you were, for example, doing a ticket kind of a of a um, um, a support ticket kind of an application, and uh, you you could generate a form to come up on Slack that would. Uh, wait for a response, type in the response, and then the response would go into the ticket. And you'll, you'd get all that information back and be able to go wherever you want with it. This would be a great time for questions if there's anything that uh, um, you're curious about or that I uh, left out of the presentation. And Patrick, if there was anything that you noticed, that'd be great. Um, we have a couple of minutes to, to answer any questions. So that uh, the issue that you had with the um, the S that was just to be a matter of just going back and correcting uh, that that output you put there. If some if you wanted to make sure somebody could copy that easily, that, it's a uh, simple thing. I just wanted to. It, so it, you, exactly. Yeah, when you when you copied that uh, that response, um, you we could just correct that. Then it would be right. So. Um... That's, yeah, that was in our original, um, uh, where we wired it to the application. So, a uh, really good question. We wired it in two places. So, um, where we sent the message to Slack, we were saying campfire yep, detail, is. but we implemented it as uh, without the S. So. Yep, that would be a good one. And we did it in the add and the update button. So we should whoop, we should do it in both spots. Exit.
And it'd be really good to know whether that would, whether you can copy and paste. So we'll do, we'll do an update here and take a look at Slack. And now it's a better answer and let's see if copy and paste would do it. Not that this is, nope, it doesn't like, uh, it likes you to type, it's watching you to type. So. Not working well. Maybe we can be pasted it here. Yep. Oh, and it would work even what, even if we didn't get the interactive one. So, not uh, yes, that would be a nice way to clean that up. Cool. Um, since we have. Three minutes and a captive audience. Another <laughs> we could do is uh, show, for example, the difference. If I edit this and we send it, uh, we're sending it ephemeral. But if we if we left it blank or set it in channel, we get a slightly different response. So let's take a look at that. Same thing. Uh, so now we see only visible to you is your command, but this is visible to, throughout the channel. So you, that's the difference there in channel versus. And, and where is that um, in channel versus ephemeral? Where is that documented in Slack? Was that on the, the page that you showed us? Um, I did not, it, it wasn't one of the pages I showed. Oh, okay. It, it, was, uh, it was in this bot dealing with, uh, with responding to webhooks, there is a, a spot in the definition. Uh, okay. Might be able to let Google help us find it. Yeah, and it, I mean, it, it is it is a documented feature. Yeah, sure. I yeah. found it was this wasn't the page that I found it, but it's okay. Cool. All right. Since there are no questions, I thank you all for attending. Let me uh, find our end slide here. Um, thank you all for attending. It's uh, we're, we're um, happy to be able to come week by week and show off the features of Plant and App, and we appreciate you coming. Um, reminder that there's another opportunity for you to uh, directly heckle me on, on Friday at uh, 10 a.m. at the low code campfire. Uh, very good. Uh, thank you all. We'll see you next week.